Allport's Lexical Analysis of the English Language. In 1936, Allport and Odbert published a monograph. Monographs are something we don't see that often in modern science. The typical monograph is longer than a journal article, but much shorter than the typical book. It represents a scholarly effort that exceeds usually the effort put into a journal article. Originally, Allport had wanted to put this lexical analysis into his seminal 1937 textbook, which was the first textbook in the modern era of personality psych. However, this just got out of hand and got too big to be an appendix, and he and Oddbert published it in 1936. Now, the logic they used to develop their lexical analysis consists primarily of the notion that we have a tendency to want to represent through some kind of name different mental processes, traits, or dispositions, especially when we're talking about other people. And we always use these trait descriptive adjectives. We talk about someone who's nice, we talk about someone who's kind, we talk about an evil person, we talk about an extroverted person, and so on. And these words become a quick shorthand for us to be able to convey this information. And Allport says that the use of language by personality psychology is extremely important. And the words we use have to depict and accurately and faithfully describe terms that correspond to these traits or dispositions. Now, in 1936, the notion of the operational definition had not yet been defined by science, and in personality psychology, the notion of operational definitions are critical. If I'm talking about a term like extroversion, I need to define what I mean by it. And Allport's first attempt at doing the lexical analysis would eventually lead to things like operational definitions of psychological characteristics. He also thought that these words only existed because he rep- they represented behaviors that he said really are there. They're not phantoms, they're not illusions, they're not something made up. These are behaviors that people really do. He also believed that the meaning and usage of trait words could change over time. When I was a little kid in the 60s, uh, watching the Flintstones in my pajamas on Saturday morning, uh, the Flintstones theme song would talk about the Flintstones having a gay old time. The word gay since the 1960s has changed from meaning happy to being used to describe male homosexuals. And there are all kinds of other words that have changed meanings or lost meanings. Allport noted that there are also words that simply aren't used any longer because they fall out of favor or they were used by an insignificant number of people. Personality psychologists who talk about the lexical analysis approach oftentimes talk about the word akakakological. Isn't that a mouthful? Akakakological basically is a word that means someone who doesn't believe in God but holds out the belief that God may exist, which is, frankly, a lot easier to say than agakakological. And you frequently don't hear that word in conversation. So they literally read the English language dictionary to describe the words in the English lexicon that could describe human behavior. 
Oh. Sorry about that. I'm just going to go back. The starting point was the 1925 Webster's Unabridged Dictionary. Now you just saw a quick shot of that on the next slide. That dictionary was one of these massive, extremely thick books that contained 400,000 terms. I have no idea how many terms would be in a current unabridged dictionary. And frankly, most of us never crack a dictionary now anyway. Even I, who am the great lover of books, will look up a word online before I look for my dictionary. And if I were to have to pull my dictionary out, I'd probably sneeze with all the dust that's on it. So here is the old hardbound 1925 Webster's Unabridged Dictionary. Quite a thick book. Wouldn't want it thrown at me, would you? Now, when Allport and Odbert went through the dictionary, they took out and put into a list all of the words that could distinguish one individual from another. So you could talk, for example, about a person having more or less of a characteristic described by a word. So if I were to use the word generous, I could talk about one person being extremely generous and another person being, well, not so generous. Allport and Odbert called out, took out of that 400,000 terms, approximately 18,000 words that could potentially differentiate individuals from each other. And then they did a subsequent analysis of those words. I'm just going to give you the bottom line on what they did. And for our concerns here, they divided the words into four categories. So let me describe the categories for you. Category one were neutral terms, possibly stable personality traits. So these would be words like introverted, aggressive, conscientious, impulsive, stuff like that. The second category represented present or temporary states. And these are words that could describe things like mood, emotion, stuff like that. A couple of examples are words like rejoicing, frantic. Uh, the problem with the temporary or state terms is that sometimes they can also represent either a state or a trait. For example, modern research in anxiety has demonstrated that there is both state and trait anxiety. Some people are very anxious all of the time. They're always freaking out about everything. Anytime something comes up, it's a crisis. Other people may be anxious when something goes terribly wrong. They have a big exam coming up. They wonder where they're going to get their money for their next month's rent. Uh, but that anxiety goes away when the problem goes away. And there are many other kinds of words that are in this category that may represent either states or traits. Another example would be happy. Uh, we're happy when something nice happens to us, when something positive happens to us. Uh, but some people just are always happy and in a good mood. Category 3. Character evaluation. Now, Allport cautioned about this category and said that it should be used very judiciously and should be targeted especially to look at things having to do with character evaluation. So words like worthy, insignificant, things like that are character evaluation. And if you remember from Allport's 
eight assertions about traits where traits are not synonymous with moral or social judgments, you find this is a major issue. Uh, in modern times, we talk about uh, people who have the dark triad of traits, who are actually uh, basically evil people. And uh, Allport didn't think this was a basis for big personality traits at the time, but I'm sure that he would agree that uh, being high on evil is not very good. And the last category, category four, miscellaneous. And these are words that didn't fit into any of the other three categories and were just simply lumped together. So you get behaviors like being pampered, crazed, spoiled, stuff like that. Physical qualities, being lean, being portly, tall, short, whatever. And talents and abilities uh, to be gifted, to be prolific. Uh, again, these categories uh, could possibly represent important things. Uh, I happen to think that uh, things like intelligence are actually uh, an important part of personality and those people who are uh, what I call very intellectually endowed behave differently than those people who are not intellectually endowed. Uh, the use of not intellectually endowed is my way of calling someone stupid who can't figure it out because they aren't intelligent enough to do so. And you usually can get away before they get angry with you. But I have often thought that those words are categorically missing from these analysis. Other people in the meantime have came and criticized this list, for example, sex and gender do not show up in any of these four categories. And these words became the subsequent basis for other analyses that led to the five-factor model of personality. So if something is missing and not put into that analysis, well, it's your typical, uh, to use the computer term, gigo thing. If you don't put something into your analysis, you're not going to get something out of it. So these are four rough fume categories, not perfect, but they're what Allport came up with and probably were pretty good for 1936. So Allport and Oddbert use these trait descriptive adjectives to try to demonstrate the importance of words in defining personality characteristics. And eventually these become part of the five-factor model of personality, which is our next video lecture for you to see. So, Dr. B signing out for now. See you in the next presentation. Here's the reference if you need it. And this has been a We Have Couches video production. Uh, all rights reserved by Professor Michael Botwin. Bye now.